Slavery existed in Africa long before a white man ever stepped foot there. Some people will hear this and recognize that I just stated a historical fact, and others will hear this and get offended and throw whatever buzzwords they saw on Twitter this evening at me. They'll call me alt-right, blah, 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 and deny history. Now, why history has been politicized, I don't know, but history is history in... Facts are facts, regardless of how you feel. Now, before I jump into this, I want to show you a video. Now, I know a lot of people are familiar with this podcast that this is clipped from. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like this podcast. Hey, I don't like this podcast either, but that's all besides the point because it's just this clip here that I would like to highlight. Now, I'm not hooked up on what this woman is wearing. That doesn't matter to me. What I'm hooked up on is her interpretation of how slavery played out, and it is very similar to how most younger people and older people honestly but most younger people view how slavery played out so let's listen to what she thinks happened i don't think you can be sexist towards men and i don't think you can be racist towards white people how have you arrived at that conclusion just hearing like all the stories about like all this messed up stuff they did in the past you are you referring to slavery yeah but how do you think they went about getting slaves like what do you think the process was they like went into Africa and stole them from their homes. Yeah, so you think that they just went to Africa and then like rounded them all up and like caught them, put them in sacks and then put them on that's, the boat? That's pretty much what I, the gist of what I got out yeah. of it. So the reality boats. of it, Africans who were sold in the slave trade were sold by other Africans. So there were slave markets in Africa where they would capture their own people and then sell them off overseas. And there was also the Barbary slave trade as well, which was Arabic Barbary pirates who would capture white Europeans and enslave them too. And there was like over a million white Europeans that were enslaved during the Barbary slave trade. So wait, are you trying to like say that like white people were slaves too? Yeah, white people were also slaves. That's where the term slave comes from is the Slavic region. Exactly. Like, in history, I don't, I don't see books talking about the oppression of white people. Yeah, that's, Why that's, do you think that's that a problem. <laughs> I don't. And that question in the very end is why I made this video. Why don't we learn about this? Why are so many young people under this impression? I believe it is 100% deliberate. I believe there is some reason behind it, and I will get into that later at the end of the video, but this mindset here is what I want to address in this video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the African slave trade, because if somebody says that white people didn't invent slavery, they get all sorts of labels thrown at them and people start freaking out and losing their minds, but it is stating a historical fact. Why a historical fact is so polarizing is completely beyond me. But this is what happens when you politicize literally everything. We're living in a society where you can't even state a fact anymore without having labels thrown at you and getting called racist and this, that, and the third. So let's actually tell the story about how things kind of generally played out. But before I get into it, I would like to say... Please do not leave a comment on this video if you cannot emotionally handle this subject matter. I understand this is very jarring information. This is new information to a lot of people watching this, unfortunately. And I don't want you to run into my comments and make a fool of yourself because you got emotionally charged or triggered or whatever at me simply stating historical facts. I already know I'm going to get a bunch of people swarming in and assuming my alignment on the political spectrum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is going to this just naturally comes whenever you talk about these topics. But the truth is you don't know my political affiliation, you don't know me personally, and to throw such labels at me just shows your ignorance. That's all it does. It puts your own ignorance on full display. It says more about you than it does about me. And another thing I would like to add is if you put 10 historians in a room and discuss these types of topics, you're going to get about 10 different answers and you're going to get a debate and da da da. I mean, the sources for this stuff, they vary. And it's important to keep this in mind. And I don't get into any hyper specifics here because the numbers and the this and that's, I mean, depending on this source, you may get this number, depending on this historian, you may get this number. But the fact stands regardless that slavery was pervasive in Africa for an incredibly long time, long before a white man ever stepped foot there. So if you wish to come into my comments and try to fact check me or, you know, say, hey, you, you got this wrong. This is how, you know, it played out, you know, um, 
you know, you're, you feel free to, that's okay. You know, I would like you to provide a timestamp, you know, about like what you think uh, I'm wrong on, um, provide your sources. I would appreciate a few. Um, and yeah, man, like just be cool about it. Let's build a discussion. Um, let's talk about it because this type of topic, this subject here, it doesn't get talked about a lot. That's the truth. So, um, Hey, if this comment section can be a place where people finally get to discuss this type of stuff, then that's fantastic. And my job has been accomplished. That's my goal here. So, uh, yeah. I'm not making this video to demonize African history and culture. Africa has a very rich history and is home to many beautiful and fascinating cultures and traditions. And if you've never studied African history, I deeply encourage you to do so. Any lover of history will find African history to be incredibly interesting. Now see, I'm not arguing that history is being changed. I'm arguing that history is being misrepresented and important context is purposely being left out in order to peddle a certain narrative. For example, we never learned that white people invented slavery we just didn't learn that anybody else did it before them so it's all we're left to think with this tactic you can essentially change history by only teaching pieces of it and leaving out very important context the unpopular truth is Africa was not a passive victim in regards to slavery in fact they were actually a massive perpetrator. The Trans-Saharan slave trade lasted over a thousand years and involved over 10 million people being transported across the desert into the Islamic world to be slaves, for example. Slavery in Africa was present long before any European influence or colonialism, and slavery was present in Africa centuries before the arrival of the Europeans. In fact, some of the earliest traces of slavery date all the way back to the Sumerian civilization around 3500 BCE. So this whole narrative schools and the media like to push that white people invented slavery and that enslaving other people is something that is exclusive to Europeans, America, or just white people in general is historically inaccurate and absurd. European involvement actually played a role in the abolition of slavery in Africa, and African kingdoms fought tooth and nail against those abolitionist European empires to keep slavery around. The notion that white people just landed their ships and ran around capturing slaves isn't entirely true either, considering Africans in large part ruled Africa and established the conditions under which slave sales took place. The crew of a slave ship wasn't in any position to go against African rulers and their armies, to go running around Africa and capturing random people. The stronger African peoples captured the weaker African peoples and those weaker peoples were enslaved and then sold to the Europeans. Many different tribes all over Africa terrorized and enslaved each other. Europeans, except for the Portuguese, hardly ever actually participated in the raids that resulted in the enslavement of Africans. Europeans typically only saw the end result. Many empires in Africa were built on and benefited massively from slavery. The Mali Empire, the Ghanaian Empire, the Songhai Empire, Jolof, Kabu, and many more. But I would like to bring up the Kingdom of Dahomey specifically though. Dahomey participated heavily in the transatlantic slave trade, as did many other African groups. Dahomey just took it to the next level. They participated in slave raids, mass executions, and slave trading. They sold slaves to various European traders such as the Portuguese, British, French, and Dutch, as well as many African kingdoms. The slaves they sold to the Europeans were then brought to the Caribbean, Brazil, and southern United States to work on plantations and other labor-intensive industries. The Kingdom of Dahomey was located in a very vulnerable spot and suffered brutal oppression and enslavement by the Yoruba peoples, which essentially lit a fire inside them which led them to eventually break away and seek revenge. First though, they would need to make sure they'd never endure such brutal oppression again. Like how European people conquered others, Dahomey, like many other African groups, would seek to conquer others as well, which is precisely what they did, as they conquered the stateless and leaderless people around them. Dahomey became incredibly strong, and that strength in large part was formed with the goal to never be enslaved again. See, many slave raids took place throughout Africa. Slaves built many kingdoms in Africa. Dahomey supplied the state of Oyo slaves as tribute under their dominance. They supplied the European slaves for weapons in order to compete with the kingdoms around them. And they supplied the Hausa and northern Nigeria slaves to get horses from them. Dahomey is also notorious for engaging in many mass killings. These were massive ritual murders, and the historical context behind some of these mass killings revolve around the fact that they were required to continue their vitality and strength in order to rule, but also other things such as religious purposes and to display their strength and dominance. Ultimately, France conquered Dahomey in part to end their slave trading. 
In 1851, the British Royal Navy laid siege to the Nigerian city of Lagos and its king because the king refused to end the slave trade. Once the British defeated them, they compelled them to end the slave trade, forcibly freed every slave in Lagos' territory, and expelled all the slave traders from that land. They later imposed abolition on all of Nigeria. The British and the Kingdom of Benin went at it as well, where according to eyewitness accounts, the Kingdom of Benin actually sacrificed hundreds of its slaves for divine protection against the British. The British repopulated the destroyed city with freed slaves and offered emancipation and resettlement to any slave that could escape to their territory. They were stamping out native slavery in Benin even up till the 1920s. But none of this is to say there were no African abolitionists though, because there were, there were many. But see, all of this just further enforces my point that the notion that slavery was exclusive to colonialism, Europeans, or white people is absolutely absurd. Mansa Musa also participated in the slave trade. He owned thousands of slaves. On his religious pilgrimage from Mali to Mecca, it said he took 12,000 slaves, which is funny because I've caught some articles calling his slaves servants to sort of dampen the blow. I highly doubt though that that same choice of words would be afforded to any European, American, or white individual in general. Anyways, many of Mansa Musa's slaves, both men and women, worked tirelessly in the mines and produced his wealth, which was no easy job. If you want more information, I'd highly recommend recommend you read from Ibn Battuta's writings where he tells what he experienced such as female servants and slaves as well as little girls appearing before men completely naked as well as women who come into the sovereign's house being nude and wearing no veils over their faces, the sultan's daughter included. See, there are many different forms of slavery. What we saw take place in the transatlantic slave trade was racialized chattel slavery. Now, this form of slavery existed in many ancient civilizations throughout history. In Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, and ancient Rome, to name a few. Racialized chattel slavery is commonly understood to be exclusive to the transatlantic slave trade, though as the concept of race or categorizing people into distinct racial groups didn't really emerge until the 15th and 16th centuries. There are many debates on this, however, because similar forms of slavery can be found in Asia and various other parts of the world throughout history. Now, whether slavery is racialized or not, Slavery is slavery. Just because race-based slavery didn't emerge until the transatlantic slave trade doesn't mean people weren't being enslaved due to cultural differences, ethnic differences, etc. A slave is a slave regardless of skin color, and slavery is heinous. The concept of treating a human being as property and forcing them into labor, sex acts, castration, execution, and anything else is wrong. But to pin the blame on only one group of people oversimplifies history and doesn't do justice to the many lives that were unfortunately lost throughout history due to slavery. These are the stories of millions of lives in Africa being lost in history. All of this sacrifice just to not even get the light of day in a textbook or lecture in a classroom. This video isn't meant to condemn Africa's history. It's meant to teach it and to remember the lives of those who were unfortunately subjected to such brutal and oppressive systems. But these people were products of their time. The Africans, the Europeans, they all engaged in a horrendous, yet common practice of their time. There are many things we practice today that hundreds of years from now will likely be condemned by future generations. But it's important to teach this history because when you don't teach history, history will repeat itself. So my question is, why do you guys think we don't learn this? Why are so many people completely oblivious and ignorant to this information, this history? Why don't we learn this? Why don't the lives of the slaves in Africa get the same attention as the lives of the slaves in America? Why don't we learn about the slavery in Africa? Why are the stories and lives of so many African people being completely lost through history? Why aren't we learning this? I mean, I've moved like 12 times. I've been to so many different schools and different school systems. I've taken US history countless times. I've taken world history. I've taken African history. I've taken so many different history courses in both just K through 12 and in university. And I have never learned about the African slave trade. I never learned about this. Even in multiple African history courses I've taken at university. I never learned about any of this. All of this information was just left out. Just completely left out. I mean, it played such a massive role in Africa for so long. It, it was just left out. We, I just didn't learn it. And so many people I know as well, personally. It, it, most of them think that white people just, you know, sailed their ships over there and captured a bunch of black people, put them on ships and took them back over here. That's what, that's what most people think. It's, it is 
crazy that we don't learn the, the truth of what happened. And I know people could say, well, you know, you don't learn it in your school system in America because it's not American history, but America wouldn't exist if it weren't for this. So you can't make, I don't think you can make that argument. I just, I don't know. I don't, I personally think we don't learn this because it helps build animosity between white people and black people. And this in turn further divides us and a divided people are less likely to unite and a divided people are also easier to control. So this creates situations where no matter how close a white and black person gets to each other in America, there can always be that lingering thought of, I know what your ancestors did to mine. You know what I mean? It always, it's just always going to be in the back of their minds. And it always is this, this tension, this animosity. It's always going to be present. If we don't teach the true story of what actually happened, they can demonize white people by leaving out important details of history and painting the narrative that white people invented slavery and just went over to Africa and enslaved a bunch of people. And they can demonize black people by only highlighting and pushing forward into the mainstream the worst and most degenerate parts of the culture. I know I'm going to get a lot of people in my comments saying, oh, you're sympathizing with colonialism, you're defending colonialism, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. And if that's what you got from this, then you weren't listening. All right. You were only listening to type your little comment out and respond rather than listening to understand. I mean, yes, European policy abolished slavery in Africa, but it also did many negative things as well. So, you know, just because I'm highlighting this part of history doesn't mean I'm, you know, it just people come to these weird conclusions. They jump to these crazy conclusions that just because i didn't mention something means i'm like defending the other thing people did that on my my other video where i talked about like black culture and stuff everyone said oh you're not mentioning this so it must, must mean you you don't think it exists or you're you're defending this other side like no that's just not what i'm talking about right now i'm talking about this this is what i'm talking about i'm not talking about that so uh, i'm focused on this this is the topic of discussion we can talk about those topics i can go ahead and make separate videos for those topics where i highlight those but that's not the subject of discussion right now so let's stay on topic and let's talk about this it just pains me that millions and millions of lives were lost through these different slave trades and they just get lost through time they don't get their stories told they get no time of day during a lecture, a textbook, nothing. And not only do they not get their stories told and do they get forgotten, but it also leads to a society that is demonizing one group of people and saying, you know, and crediting them with something that they, they didn't create, that the entire world participated in at different points in time. So you have a misinformed society on top of this who is demonizing one group of people for something that everybody did at one point. Do you see the problem here? Like, do you see, like, I know I'm going to get a lot of people trying to poke holes in my, in my comments and, oh, you, you didn't mention this, you didn't. But do you see my point here? Do you see what I'm getting at? And people can try to fact check me and do whatever they want. But the point still stands that slavery was pervasive in Africa before a European person, before a white person, period, ever stepped foot there. That is a fact, a historical fact that you cannot discredit. You can't prove it wrong because it's not wrong it is true. So whether you want to say, oh, man, Samusa didn't really do this or that, or whether you want to say, oh, well, Nigeria wasn't really doing this and the British people actually attacked for this reason, da 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 it doesn't matter. Slaves were, people were being enslaved, period. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. There were slaves present under all these empires and kingdoms, these tribes, these people, these groups. There were slaves present. Like I said, if you're too immature, if you know you're too immature, you're not emotionally, um, resilient enough to even like take on these topics and maybe don't comment because i don't think you're in the emotional state the, the mental state the emotional state i don't think you're in the mental state to engage in these discussions if you're gonna get really defensive and you're just gonna attack me as a person instead of a, you know try to correct my points what people will do instead of you know trying to uh disprove any in points you made is they'll try to attack uh, attack you as a person because um they can't actually disprove anything you said so they have to now try to discredit you don't do that. That's not that's not going to work. You just look like a, a hateful idiot. You know what I mean? You look foolish. So don't do that. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of y'all's day. Thank you all for watching. Stay healthy. Peace.